It's just two days to go before the UK formally tells the EU it wants out. Theresa May is in the final stages of preparing to trigger Article 50. It's but happening the, on Wednesday, isn't it? It is. It's all very, very, very exciting. But as the clock, countdown clock starts ticking, we still have very little idea what Brexit and post-Brexit Britain will actually look like. Well, joining us in the studio is Daily Mirror's Kevin Maguire. And, well, Andrew Pearce should be here, but... He's in Paris, the very heart of the Europe that we're leaving. What's the matter, Andrew? You couldn't bear to leave it? Listen, I love Europe. I've always loved Europe. I've just never wanted to be run by Europe. And it's fantastic to be here with the Arc de Triomphe behind. And I keep saying to the French, we'll love you even more when we've left the EU. And you know what? Quite a few of them are a bit jealous, I think. I think they'd quite like to do the yeah, same. But you, know, but you know why they might be sceptical? Is It's a bit like when you get divorced and you say to the wife that you're leaving, <laughs> I love you even more when we're divorced. It doesn't really carry a lot yeah, of well, weight. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't see this as a divorce, Piers. Divorces are horrible. Everybody hates divorces. Everybody loses in a divorce. We're going to gain from this. This is a brilliant new beginning. It's not a divorce at all. Um, OK, Kevin... I mean, Kevin McGuire, we're all going to win, we're going to gain. It's going to be the happiest divorce ever. Hasn't Paris suffered enough <laughs> without having to have Tory boy going over there moaning about the cost of a gin and tonic? <laughs> <laughs> Which is what he does. What do we know at this stage about... I mean, for instance, it's interesting that Andrew's over in Paris. We trigger Article 50. Yep. Once the negotiation... We don't know what's going to happen in the negotiations, but what's likely to happen when it comes to travelling, working within what we, you know, are now a member of that club, the EU. What's going to happen afterwards? Yeah, it's a two-year process, and the truth is we don't know. Theresa May doesn't know, which is actually an argument for why, when you do know and you get to the end of the process, it's an argument for a second referendum, because then you would really know what you're choosing. But if it all goes horribly wrong, there will be taxes on British goods going to continental Europe and Ireland, which would mean uh, the price of exports would go up, which would hit jobs here, particularly manufacturing. There'd be a lot of bureaucracy. It's, it's, it's very possible that you might have to fill in a form and almost get a visa to go to some places, because the other 27 countries are not very happy about this. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if they want to make an example of well, Britain me, to punish us. Yeah, let me ask Andrew. Uh, Andrew, you're in the heart of France. I mean, what is the reaction from French people to what we're doing? Well, some are bemused, some, a lot of them were surprised, but they don't see that there's going to be much of a difference because they point out that America does business with France all the time. They're not in the EU. Americans come here on holiday. They're not in the EU. So they just see it'll be a, a slightly different relationship. A lot of them worry about the future of the EU, though, without Britain, because they think Britain is such a significant country in terms of Europe. But, uh, you know, they should worry about the EU because it's a rotten old organisation that's falling apart. And we're okay. getting out just in time. Kevin, let me ask you this. Tony Blair, again, yeah. over the weekend, coming out very strongly, saying there is still a possibility that Brexit could be stopped, that actually if enough Britons rise up and make mm. it clear to their local MPs and everybody else that they, with hindsight, wished they hadn't pressed this button... Uh, and they would vote differently, you could force another vote. Is this even a, a starter? I mean, could this possibly happen? I think, I think it's unlikely it's going to happen, but there is a possibility. Remember, Theresa May, the Prime Minister's changed her mind. She wanted to remain. She's now leave. I remember when Tory boy in Paris mm. there, he would have voted to stay, and then he voted to leave. If people change their minds, and it's the entitlement of all of us to change our minds, What's wrong with that? Then you could look at it again. But as things stand, we're heading out of the European Union. It's just how hard the brick mm. is going to be. Uh, uh, Andrew, is, uh, is, we, is, is, is that wishful thinking on behalf of Remainers, do you think? It, it is, it is. And Tony Blair should be reminded every time he says we should stay in the EU, he's the one who gave away half of the rebate, which costs the British taxpayer billions of pounds a year. He gave it away in return for reform of the EU. There was no reform, no reform of agriculture. We just gave away our money. So we don't want lectures from him about why we should stay in the EU. He should have reformed it when he was in, when he was Prime Minister. So should previous Prime Ministers. They've never reformed the EU, which is why so many of us have voted to leave. Andrew, well, you... you're not not staying there for the actual moment, are you? I mean, Wednesday's no, a big day you. for you. I'll be back. I'm oh, coming no. back today. I couldn't bear to be away <laughs> we thought from the, the we historic thought for, moment. Well, we thought for one joyous moment that you were part of the trade <laughs> negotiations, that you were basically being, <laughs> no, no, no. You were being sent to live in Paris. <laughs> 
No, we want we want the negotiations to be successful, which is why they're bringing me back and getting me out of here. <laughs>